I thought before this fight that uh, Better BF might be losing a step because he looked a little rusty in his last fight against uh, Adam Dinas. Uh, Dinas looked to be the type of fighter that Better BF, you know, should have gotten out of there a lot quicker. Better BF came into this fight against Marcus Brown with a record of 16 and 0 with 16 knockouts. Uh, he was always considered a big light heavyweight, but this marks marked the first time he had some trouble making the weight as he weighed in at two ounces over the light heavyweight limit of 175 pounds. Uh, the WBC and IBF gave him two hours to lose the weight or he'd have to relinquish the titles. But Better BF did make the weight a little, a little over an hour later. Uh, meanwhile, Marcus Brown comes into this fight having switched trainers from uh, Andre Rogier and Gary Stark to Derek James. Uh, the switch in trainers did add a new wrinkle to the proceedings as you know, James has been so successful with uh, Jermell Charlo and Errol Spence Jr. Uh, Brown put in four months of work with James in Texas, and everything about him looks a bit tighter. Uh, his defense looks tight, and he does score some points in the early going, but uh, it's all academic when Better BF starts getting his timing down. What's interesting is how unpredictable Better BF's attack is. Uh, sometimes he leads to the body, other times he starts with headshots. Uh, sometimes he punches around Brown's guard, and other times he punches straight through. So there is no pattern to his assault, and he rarely repeats the same combination. Uh, also take note of his uh, footwork as he does this little skip step to the side in order to get closer to Brown. But uh, Better BF's attack has no predictable pattern that Brown can get a beat on to defend himself. And you can see how broken down he is mentally uh, by the final knockdown. And mental pressure in the early Exactly, Corey. He may lose the round on the scorecard, but he's winning it in the fight. He's breaking him down. He's walking with his opponent. And those are the three times that Jean Pascal caught him. And it's the same shot that he's been caught with in previous fights as well. He gets plugged with some rough stuff along the ropes. And being um, a southpaw versus an orthodox, it's the last thing you want to do is pull out, pull back straight, and then line for the right hand. And that's what happened in his previous fights. And he does not want to do that. Shine body work, now back to his jab. Final 10 seconds of round two. Not a lot happening, but Marcus Brown, the busier fighter, certainly landed more shots here in the second round, and you'd have to think that's two rounds in the bank for the challenge. Absolutely, Corey, but I also get the feeling that Arthur Better Biev is just, he's like a wild man in the jungle, just stalking his prey, just slowly stalking uh, Marcus Brown. But he definitely has been away the first two rounds uh, by not being as active as Marcus by Marcus Brown up the middle there. But to your point, Steve, no no Brown no finding himself. Oh, that is a nasty gash right in the middle of the forehead of Better BF, and he is leaking all over the place. We got unintentional clash of heads. On Marcus Brown's foot. As Better BF getting other instructions from his corner, which are to go to the body. Body movement there from Marcus Brown, making that a little bit difficult. This is better work from better BF. This is where he wants to be. He wants to keep his guy trapped in the ropes. Now let Marcus Brown swing around and, and move off the ropes and, and throw those counter shots. Break, man. You, you gotta stop punching. 
That's good work for better be out. Three, four. Oh, a good right hand by Better Biev. 20 seconds left to go in the round as Better Biev finding some good openings. Right hand. Brown trying to counter off the ropes, but Better Biev just overwhelming him right now. And Brown just covering up as the seconds tick away. I think getting Marcus Brown a little shook. With those overhand rights. Brian, no punches, no punches. Let's go, let's come back. Watch your heads, guys. Good left hook for a better BF. Freezes Brown along the ropes, who again is in Stuffing exactly the territory the better BF no wants. Punches. That's where better BF wants back, his fight to be. Back. He'll be most effective in there when uh, Marcus Brown's trapped in the corner. Marcus Brown was successful earlier. He was getting all in from Better Diaz's forehead. Final minute of round six. Oh, a beautiful one, two by Better Diaz. He's behind it with a good left hook, and there's that right hand that he just wraps around the guard of Marcus Brown. Saw that shot a moment ago, that kind of hybrid scoop uppercut. That's the shot that Better BS Camp calls the Campillo. It's the <laughs> shot that he knocked Gabriel Campillo out. comes to a close. For the past few rounds, I really feel like the output of Marcus Brown has really dropped. I don't know if it's from the cut or the constant pressure from better BF, but his output has definitely dropped over the past couple of rounds. But then now that uh, Marcus Brown has slowed down a little bit, I feel that he has a little more confidence to throw that power jab and really push Marcus Brown in the corner. So he can unload like he's doing here. man to contend with when he feels that he has you hurt. Good oh, shot to the body. beautiful left hook to the body. And a right hand right behind it, and Marcus Brown will take a knee. Still lots Seven. of time left in this round, hey, Corey. You all right? Lift up your hand and show me you're all right. Box. minute and change is an eternity for the only world champion in boxing with a 100% knockout ratio. Let's see if Marcus Brown can hang on. And Corey, to point some note, as I talked, as we mentioned earlier, um, better be at, isn't just an aggressive, tough fighter. He's skilled and smart. You see him make those small side steps to the right of uh, Marcus Brown. Take away the left hand when he has Marcus Brown the ropes and dig those shots to the body. He's a very, very smart fighter, just like he did right there and scoops that right hook. Right. Or that specialty no shot. Let him go, Marcus. Let him go. Step back, Marcus. Let go. Brown still trying to recover. Better be him. You see, Brown just stationary. Better be him. He's able to turn him. He's able to get different angles. Ten seconds remaining here in round seven. Even with the blood flowing, you got to give so much credit to the champion out of better be out. He's creating these angles. He's using Marcus Brown's body to push him and sidestep him. Very entertaining round. Able to do right now when you're hurt, when you're tired, when you've had a physically strong and imposing fighter like better be out all over you all night. Are you capable of moving around on the back foot? Or is this just what Marcus Brown has left? Well, if you want to be a world champion, you better be capable. But I think that this is possible what he has left. He's had a lot of big shots, 
And like I said earlier, Corey, just the constant pressure and the threat of better BL is enough to drain him. Seconds of round number nine, 17 for 17, and still WBC and IBF. Light heavyweight champion of the world, Abdul. 